The user Aquarius Z over at PC Shipping Forums has been one of the most reliable sources of leaks in the past, and they've just posted via Komachi, of course, the die sizes of AMD's upcoming big Navi lineup. The 7nm flagship in question, which could be likely called the AMD RX 5950 XT or, well, anything else really, AMD's free to shake things up, you know will feature a huge die of 505 millimeters square based on the simple maths will offer at least 2x the performance of the small navi rx 5700 xt gpu still while the user has been reliable in the past we will urge you to take a grain of salt when the information stems from a single source and has not been verified it's not just the navi 2 gpu that was exposed as far as the die size uh, navi 22 and navi 23 will be clocking in at 340 millimeters squared and 240 millimeters squared respectively. Navi 23 is likely going to be the successor for the current generation flagship, the RX 5700 XT. The source also mentioned that these measurements have an error of around five millimeters squared to give or take. So considering the RX 5700 XT is exactly 251 millimeters square, the dust size for the Navi 21 makes a lot of sense. Now the RX 5700 XT contains 40 CUs based on RDNA 1 architecture and the upcoming RX 5950 XT, or whatever AMD does decide to call it, based on the Navi 21 GPU could easily contain upwards of 80 CUs based on these numbers. This would result in a grand total of 5,120 stream processors, not counting any efficiency improvements going from RDNA 1 to RDNA 2, which there certainly will be. This is a performance increase of at least 2x, considering the clock speeds were able to stay the same. Now there is one caveat with this assumption, however, is that the die area is being used for the shader cores if AMD chooses to deploy dedicated ray tracing hardware to the Navi 2x family, then the CU count could be less. Our personal guess is that AMD would rather go for a GPGPU approach to ray tracing rather than dedicated cores like Nvidia's deployment of tensor cores and RT cores in Turing. In any case, architectural gains combined with a physical size increase make a very good guess at what you're looking at is, again, roughly a 2x increase in gaming performance regardless. Now, benchmarks of an upcoming AMD next generation GPU have leaked out over on Cube VR and shows an incredibly powerful card in the making. Tons of AMD cards have also passed RRA certification, so AMD is clearly preparing an entire lineup of graphics cards for launch. All of the telltale signs for a full-blown graphics card launch from AMD are there, so if you're in the market for a high-end card, you might want to wait a few months to see what AMD does as far as making their move. For also from what we've heard, Nvidia has been patiently waiting on AMD to roll out their big Navi lineup before deciding on a final pricing for their Ampere GPUs. If nothing else, gamers can expect some new GPUs within a few months from AMD. But what to expect on RDNA 2's ray tracing support? Well, the latest rumors indicate that expect in terms of Red Team's ray tracing strategy to tackle Nvidia's GeForce RTX lineup. Now, according to PTT forums, it is reported that while AMD will release multiple RDNA two GPUs later this year, only the flagship variants will feature support for ray tracing. This might not be a huge surprise for those who've been following NVIDIA's strategy with RTX and GTX graphics cards. Like NVIDIA, AMD would also feature ray tracing on higher end variants as per the rumor and several reasons why this might be the case. First, high end GPUs be using bigger dies and would feature more capacity to support ray tracing hardware, which AMD will fully utilize to scale up its ray tracing performance versus the competition. But just like the smaller Turing dies, the Navi 2X GPU would feature GPUs which won't have the capacity to support hardware level based ray tracing to run the feature at optimal frame rates. While it would be definitely possible to run ray tracing on smaller fashion, similar to what Nvidia does, who released a driver to enable DXR support on GeForce GTX cards, they won't be necessarily have the horsepower to deliver playable frame rates. AMD also split its RDNA 2 based Navi 2X lineups into two distinct categories, one with ray tracing and one without. So what are your thoughts on that? Excited for a new uh, Navi? Do you just want 2X the performance? Do you care about the ray tracing? Do you want it? Do you not want it? And didn't AMD say something about not implementing ray tracing until they could do it across the entire product stack? For more on this and other news, follow the link in the description and make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.